Hey everyone, James from Merchant Spring here for another episode of Marketplace Masters, where we bring you insights from industry leaders around the world. Juan, thank you so much for making time to, to chat today. I wanted to get started and kind of just hand it straight over to you by saying, getting you to introduce yourself and perhaps share a bit about what your company does in the, the e-commerce space. Sure, James. Thank you. Um, great to be here with you today. I'm the CEO of Bupos. Uh, we're a company that uh, lends money specifically for acquisitions. Mostly if you want to acquire an Amazon seller in the marketplace, imagine that you want to buy a company that is making 1 million in revenue. Well, we can uh, lend around between 50 and 80% of uh, the purchase price of that company. Um, and we structure that as a royalty-based financing. So in the end, you repay over the course of uh, three to five years. And uh, it's very convenient for acquiring business. And uh, all these roll-up strategies are definitely in our agenda for, uh, for helping these aggregators, also for smaller buyers. So that's, that's what we do in, in the marketplace. Yeah, fantastic. Did you want to get into it, share a little bit of detail about a typical scenario where this has actually been able to take a business to like the next level through acquisition and using your product. Let me just give it like a, a real life example, if that's possible. Totally. Yeah. So for example, uh, we lent uh, money to some guys that owned a uh, surf uh, accessories brand, and they wanted to uh, expand into um, other kind of sports goods um, uh, niches. So they wanted to acquire uh, a baseball bat uh, brand and uh, they were very experienced managers. So we looked at in their experience and their ability to manage the business and we lent them uh, uh, 700K for buying uh, this uh, baseball bats brand. Uh, they were buying it for 1 million, which is uh, around 4.5 times the profit. So we were lending them yeah, between 3 and 3.5 uh, times their, their profit. So now these guys own two brands. They're much bigger in size and they have a, a much stronger position within the Amazon marketplace. That's, fa that, that's a fantastic story, actually. So that's actually mm -hmm. taken their business to the, another level, right? Um, do you see scenarios where it may not just be one acquisition, but it could be a multiple, like again and again and again? Is that is that how are you able to work with set, with sellers or you know businesses like in that capacity as well? Actually, we're uh, working with a small aggregator that is focused in acquiring micro brands, making half a million in revenue and uh, can that kind of of, uh, of, of seller. And uh, they're acquiring the third company with us. Uh, over time, we think that we can make many more deals with them. They're very good and uh, they have a very, very well-defined strategy. And they kind of uh, partnered with us because we are also helping them in the analysis of the acquisitions. That's fantastic. I mean, this is just almost like a groundbreaking kind of, you know, um, product, which, which is very interesting. And I guess just on that, using the surf accessories um, company as an example, you know, how do you think, you know, the use of products like yours will change the way sellers do business? Because, you know, if we go back two years, three years, this is almost unheard of, but how do you think this type of activity, you know, in conjunction with you and your company, you know, um, your product, how do you think it will change the, the landscape? Actually, if you think about what was uh, to start as an Amazon business five years ago, it was about all about finding the right niche and having a very well-defined launch strategy. Right now, you have two options. You can continue launching products if you think it makes sense, but also you can acquire consolidated ones so you can skip the initial stages of launching of buying the product testing which are kind of they add a lot of value but they take a lot of time at the same time so if you want to skip that part and go directly to owning a brand and scaling it that's something that is available in the market right now yeah very interesting and and i guess a side question right is it possible to use your product to acquire a brand or you know an amazon seller you know as the first acquisition or does it does the kind of user of your product have to have an existing on you know going concern business indeed i mean what we look at is uh, to make sure that we are relying on a on an experienced buyer and uh, this could mean that they have owned other type of businesses before 
or that they have worked in at e-commerce and also that they're committed to managing the business going forward and they will put uh, resources and efforts in, in, in making the business succeed. But uh, yeah, we work with many first time buyers. Very interesting, very interesting one. Um, now, in the interest of time, I wanted to cut straight to the big question to get your opinion, because I think you're, you know, you're obviously interacting with some very sophisticated um, big picture sellers. W- what's your prediction for, for 2022 in terms of Amazon selling, like, you know, not just in the kind of financial product space, but just in general, like what changes do you foresee and what do, what do you, what do you, what's your outlook look like? I think that 2022 is going to be a very interesting year because that's where we're going to see the consolidation of all that has happened in 2020 and 2021. These have been crazy years with all the pandemic and then all the stockouts that everybody had with all these supply chain disruptions. And then in 2022, we will see uh, the recurrent uh, growth that we were having until 2029 plus maybe some acceleration. So that's uh, super interesting. A much more stable scenario where we will all be able to settle down and, uh, and continue growing our businesses. And, uh, and in that sense, we're looking forward to that because we like stability and we like uh, continued growth rather than hiccups and, and ups and downs. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. And then I guess just to build on that question, you know, with all the the news around aggregators and the like, and I know you kind of play a part in the smaller aggregators. What are your predictions for the aggregator space for 2022? I think we will see a lot of newcomers into the market, like a a, a massive long tail, which it's actually already going out there. Uh, We will see the big players like the Thrasios and uh, the Brandons of the world uh, being uh, or focusing more and more in bigger brands, in improving their portfolio, in probably uh, more corporate transaction types. So that will leave a lot of space for all these long tail of people who want to be their own thrasios or, or start their own aggregators. So we will still see a lot of people coming into the market to do this type of strategy. Yeah, fantastic. I think um, I think overall 2022 is going to be a, a big year. I'm, I'm, I personally am very excited about getting past this COVID stuff. But look, thank you so much for, for your, your input and your, your, I guess, your insights into what's going on. Um, from the financial kind of aspect of this this space. And I'm sure we'd love to have you back in 2022 to see, see if your predictions come true. So thank you, Joanne. To- totally. Thank you, James. It was great talking to you today.